Hello and welcome to another episode of the Heavy Metal Gamer Show, and this time I want to review WWF Superstars. The game was developed and published by Technos Japan and released in 1989. It was only released on the arcade. Now I used to enjoy pro wrestling. I haven't watched it much, if at all, since 2010. I think a little bit here and there. I lost a lot of interest in it. The wrestling gimmicks these days are boring and uninspired, but back when I was younger I enjoyed watching pro wrestling. Back then they had gimmicks, they had great characters, and it was just fun to watch. Now I started watching pro wrestling around the early 90s. I really got into it around 1993, back in the day of Monday Night Raw and before the Attitude Era. I would watch Monday Night Raw on Monday nights, I would watch WCW on the weekends, and it was just something that was part of my childhood. Well back when I was younger, I remember going to the arcade and playing WWF Superstars. Now of course this was probably five, six years after the release of WWF Superstars, and some of these arcades were kind of getting rid of cabinets like that. But there was one arcade that kept theirs around. And they actually kept this game and WWF WrestleMania around for about four or five years after a lot of them were getting rid of the game after not too long after the game was released. Like two to three years. So it was kind of nice I got to play this game. WWF Superstars mainly focuses on the tag team aspect of professional wrestling. You get to choose between six wrestlers and they are Hulk Hogan, The Ultimate Warrior, Big Boss Man, Macho Man Randy Savage, Honky Tonk Man, and Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Once you choose your character, you and your tag team partner must win three matches before facing the Mega Bucks a tag team stable that was around in the WWF in 1988, which featured the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, Andre the Giant, and Virgil. But nobody gives a rat's ass about Virgil. If you beat the Million Dollar Man and Andre the Giant, you will be the headline of the newspaper, and you and your partner will be tag team champions. Although the match against the Mega Bucks is not easy. First of all, wrestling Andre the Giant is almost damn near impossible because of his size. You can't do any pile drivers or pick him up, so you have to find a way to knock his big ass down. WWF Superstars features mainly a basic grappling and attack system. When you are in a grapple, you can toss your opponent into the ropes or go into a headlock where you can perform a move. You also, you can punch and kick in the game as well as doing running attacks and moves from the top of the turnbuckle. You can also go outside the ring and fight your opponent for about 20 seconds, and then you have to get back in the ring or it'll be a count out. You will be able to find a table on the outside that you can use as a weapon. If the opponents are on the outside of the ring, both tag team partners will also join in and start fighting too. Now, I just want to take a moment and talk about the Ultimate Warrior. As a lot of you may know, he passed away on April 8th, just days after being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And he was at WrestleMania 30. And 24 hours before he passed away, he was on WWE Raw. Now, I wasn't watching wrestling when he was in his prime, but I remember him returning to the WWE, back then it was WWF, in 1996 on Monday Night Raw, and his feud with Goldust, and of course his match with Triple H at WrestleMania 12. When I was a kid, I thought he was pretty cool. Sure, he wasn't the best wrestler, but his gimmick and character was pretty crazy. It's just crazy how he was recently in the limelight, and then boom, he's gone. I will say this, just from what I have read online, he buried feuds, actual legit feuds, with Hulk Hogan, Jake the Snake Roberts, and Vince McMahon, which is a good thing. He will be missed by many, especially people who grew up watching him in his prime with the WWF. Not only that, there's a few other wrestlers in this game that are no longer with us. Big Boss Man, Andre the Giant, and Macho Man Randy Savage. Three wrestlers who, three wrestlers in the business that are legends. The graphics for WWE Superstars are pretty damn good, especially for its time. The character sprites are nice and very well done. The game is colorful. I have not noticed any glitching at all, which is great. The designs and animations are done very well. And there's even a cutscene in the game. And most of them features the Million Dollar Man, Andre the Giant, and Virgil. Not only that, you see Mean Gene Okerlund interviewing the Mega Bucks. They are declaring themselves challengers to your world championship belt. No one can beat Mega Bucks. I'll put you to sleep with my million dollar dream. Also, right before the first match, you arrive at the arena on a ring cart, similar to what they did at WrestleMania 3 and WrestleMania 6. Oh, and there's even a referee in the ring. A lot of wrestling games back in the day, the ref wasn't visible. So that's pretty cool that this game has it. 
The music and sound effects are very good. I think the music is well composed and not some garbage thrown together or anything like that. Technos Japan is known for putting out great music in their games, which is always nice. The sound effects are great as well, although I will say this, the voiceovers in the game are awful. Mainly at the cutscenes with the Mega Bucks. Now I know this game is from 1989, but I think they could have done without the voiceovers. I understand why they did it, but they are awful. And very laughable. I'll put you to sleep with my million dollar dream! The controls are not bad. They do seem a little slow at responding, especially when you lock up with your opponent, but they aren't the worst controls ever or anything like that. Moving around is pretty easy. Getting back in the ring is pretty easy. I know some wrestling games out there, especially older wrestling games, getting back in the ring is almost like a chore and very frustrating. With WWF superstars, it's not that tough. All in all, I can't really complain a whole lot about the controls. Overall, WWF Superstars is a pretty good arcade game, especially for a wrestling game, and there are quite a few good ones out there. The game is fun and somewhat tough, especially when you're wrestling the Mega Bucks, but I kind of wish there was a few more wrestlers in this game, or at least have the Mega Bucks unlocked so you can use them. But I think there should be about three or four more wrestlers in the game. Other than that, there's not much I can really complain about. I mean, a few issues here and there with the controls, but I enjoy playing this game from time to time. If you can find the arcade cabinet somewhere, put a few dollars in and play it. If not, your best chances of playing WWF Superstars is probably using MAME, which can be found online. There is a sequel to WWF Superstars titled WWF WrestleFest that was released in 1991 in the arcades. At a later time, I will do a review on that game. As you know, there's a lot of wrestling games with the WWF name and WWE name slapped on it out there. At a later time, I plan to review some of those, if not all of them. Well, that's it for this review of WWF Superstars. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, brothers. I'll put you to sleep with my million dollar dream.